What's going on, guys? This is James Allen. Today is Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. Today we have a heavily requested episode. Many of the viewers watching this wanted me to do this. Uh, they wanted me to compare Hedera HBAR to Internet Computer. And you got to give the people what they want. So here it is. Today we're going to compare Hedera HBAR versus ICP Internet Computer. Great comparison. Both of these technologies are pioneers in their own right. Uh, you guys know that Internet Computer pioneered many things. Uh, chain key cryptography, the reverse gas model, uh, dApps fully on chain. And recently we found out that uh, the ICP sm uh, smart contracts, the canisters, are searchable. They're retrievable by web crawlers. So they have the first Googleable smart contracts in the world. HBAR, their main feature, their secret sauce is the hash graph. They talk about it quite a bit, actually. Uh, that, that seems to be their uh, super weapon, their superpower, the hash graph. And what is the hash graph? It's basically a data structure that allows them to do consensus, that allows the consensus algorithm to operate. But that data structure is very different than the blockchain, right? Uh, it doesn't need pruning like blockchain databases do. And the way it stores data on its ledger, in fact, allows for multi-parallel processing. So the throughput of the network of a hash graph network is actually much higher than a blockchain traditionally. Um, but that's their secret sauce. Uh, they, they cover it a lot in their white paper, which I've read. So we have two pioneers. One is pioneering the hash graph and the other many different <laughs> features as we covered with ICP. So let's compare them. Now, I do have some notes. Here it is. Uh, I'm going to use them as reference because, like I said, I'm not a machine. I can't remember everything. So I have to look at my notes and sort of remember what I said or what number was written down. And like usual, we're going to start with the outer layer. We're going to start with the founders and we're going to work our way inward to the network itself. So let's start with the founder. The founder of Hedera HBAR, uh, there are two people. So it should be the founders, plural. I believe it's Dr. Lehman Baird and uh, the CEO, Mintz Harmon. Dr. Lehman Baird is a mathematician that actually discovered the uh, hash graph. He, he's the founder behind it, and I believe he patented that technology as well. And I've watched a few videos of him. He seems very smart. Uh, in fact, he's probably a genius. I watched him speak many times, and uh, this guy's mind is on another level, which makes sense given that he pioneered the hash graph himself. And Mintz Harmon, the CEO, he seems like a solid business guy. Um, I like him. He seems good. Uh, you know, I, I would trust him to run a business. But these two characters, no matter how bright or solid they are as businessmen, they don't strike me as in the same league of Dominique Williams. Dominique, in my opinion, is in a different league than these two characters. I see Dominique as a visionary. Uh, I see him as the next Steve Jobs. And when I look at the two founders of uh, HBAR, uh, they don't strike me as the next Steve Jobs, as opposed to when I look at Dominique, uh, I could see the next Steve Jobs in this man. I don't know if it's because Dominique keeps wearing this black sweater. I, I have no idea if it's the sweater that's doing it to me. I don't know, guys. But when I see Dominique, uh, not only he commands authority because of his looks and his uh, brains, clearly. He has this magnetism. He has this aura that I feel like, man, this guy could be the next Steve Jobs. So I give the founder section to Internet Computer simply because... Uh, my impression of Dominique is uh, visionary, as opposed to these two guys who founded Hedera. They seem like solid businessmen, but I don't see this visionary uh, feeling. I don't get the visionary feeling from them. So ICP wins the founder section. All right, the next one is market cap, and that one's also telling. The market cap of HBAR, Hedera HBAR, is $3.6 billion, from what I recall. There has been a market pullback, so the market caps of everything are, is lower now. But the market cap of Hedera HBAR is uh, $3.6 billion, and the market cap of ICP, last I looked, was $5.3 billion. So clearly, ICP wins the market cap section, but there's more to that story. Hedera HBAR was uh, launched, the network was launched in 2017. ICP's network was launched in 2021. So Hedera is four years older than ICP, yet ICP already has a higher market cap. That should be telling, right? I did say... I get the visionary uh, Steve Jobs vibe from Dominique, and already you're seeing it in a number. Uh, what do market cap represent? Vested interest, staying power. 
it represents interest group and already we're seeing more interest vested in internet computer than Hedera, even though Hedera is four years older than uh, ICP. So market cap ICP wins by far because it's bigger and it's younger. Staking reward. So the staking reward is also interesting. Uh, the Hedera network used to have higher staking, but they recently capped it to 2.5%. So if you're staking on Hedera, and it is a proof of stake network, if you're staking on, on Hedera, you're going to get a maximum of 2.5% return on investment. As opposed to ICP, you guys know the average is 8%, but there are many people getting much more than that. I myself is getting 15.7%. And I've seen people in the comment section getting more than 15.7%. I've seen people say they're getting 162 So there are people killing it on ICP as opposed to Hedera. It's capping you at 2.5% uh, return on investment. So ICP wins staking reward by far. That's a slam dunk. Now, the next topic is uh, tokenomics. ICP has a total supply of 515 million. And currently, I believe uh, HBAR has a supply of 30 billion and a max supply of 50 billion. Uh, why 50 billion? I don't know. I just saw in their white paper that they have a total max supply of 50 billion. I guess they picked an arbitrary number. Now, I want you to think about that. For, for HBAR to see $10, just $10. They would have, they would need a market cap of half a trillion, just $10, just $10. You need a market cap of nearly half a trillion. So, uh, I think the tokenomics on H bar is nowhere near as good as ICP. ICP that's only 515 million. There's not even a billion. And out of that 515 billion, I mean million, sorry, <laughs> this is not H bar out of that 515 million, half of them are locked, right? I think something like 48% of the ICP tokens are locked. Not to consider the fact that uh, you need ICPs for cycles. You burn ICPs for cycles to power your application. So I could see the, the price of ICP blowing past $2,000, right? So in terms of the tokenomics, because ICP has deflationary functions, half of the supply is locked and there's a lot less token circulating. I think they win the tokenomics section by far and HBAR is just disgrace in that department. Node operator costs. So this is really interesting. Uh, you guys know ICP's node operator situation. Each machine is going to cost you $10,000 and you need to rent a tier one data center to host your machine. So it's very ins expensive to become a node operator on internet computer, but at least you can become a node operator on internet computer. HBAR is actually a closed network. You cannot become a node operator on HBAR. It, it, it's closed. It, it's, it's only uh, the 39... 39 council members of HBAR who could run nodes. So you have to be part of the club uh, called the council and the Hedera network to run a, to be a node operator. And these uh, council members consist of large enterprises, uh, institutions like schools. And this is so bad, guys, that uh, the Hedera project, the like the source code, the protocol, is actually not open source, right? It's not open source at all. You guys know ICP is an open source project. Hedera is not an open source project, meaning that the community does not control the source code. So then you ask yourself, well, who controls governance in Hedera? Well, the same 39 council member controls the governance of the network. They control the source code. They control the evolution of the network. And only these 39 council members can be a node operator on Hedera. Now, the natural question that should come to mind is, who are these 39 council members? Now, they change. There is an election process where they rotate them, but I want to read to you some of the council members right now. So here's a list. I have it ready for you. Google, Boeing, IBM, Deutsche Telekom, LG, Tata Communication, Electricité de France, FIS University College London, the London School of Economics, Shinan Bank, Standard Bank, Ubisoft, DBS Bank, Dell, Hitachi, and several others. So if you're not some sort of gigantic big enterprise, you can't be a council member, which, which means you don't control the Hedera network and you can't be a node operator. That's an automatic failure. To me, I'm going to be honest with you, when I read in a white paper that 
it is not open source, that Hedera is not open source, I almost closed the white paper and just walked away, right? <laughs> I nearly walked away. Automatic failure. Automatic failure. Because Web3 is about what? It's about decentralizing the web. Giving people like me and you power to tokenomics, right? Giving us governance, giving us voting power, giving us sovereignty, right? Giving us privacy. Decentralizing everything. You know you can't put your dApp on internet computer if you don't hand over the, the, the source code to the community. Hedera is the very opposite of that. Everything's closed. Everything's closed to their pool, to their little circle, to their little club of 39 council member. Automatic mm. failure. Automatic mm. failure. That's just me. Automatic failure. This video should stop right now. Automatic failure. There's, there's nothing else you could say. You can't come back from that. But this was a requested video, so... Let's finish it. All right. The next thing we have is the ecosystem. And this is where it gets a little weird for me, at least when I was looking at Hedera. The ecosystem of Hedera is, uh, is a little confusing because all the smart contracts that are written on Hedera is written in Solidity, which is the Ethereum language. In fact, all the applications that are on the Hedera network are using the Ethereum virtual machine, right? The EVM. So then you ask yourself this, like how much of this is really Hedera and how much of this is Ethereum, right? Because you can't tell. Hedera doesn't have its own unique language like Cardano or ICP or Polkadot, right? Like it doesn't have its own unique language that distinguishes it from like as a unique ecosystem. It's using uh, Solidity. So how much of it is really Hedera? How much of it is Ethereum? Who knows? But here's another thing. All these apps that are on Hedera, supposedly, how easy is it for them to jump ship and go to uh, Polygon or Arbitrum or one of the many side chains of Ethereum? How easy is it for them to just jump ship from Hedera and go over to Polygon? Very easy. They're using Solidity. They're running on the Ethereum virtual machine. There's nothing stopping them from jumping sheep. So so to me, Hedera is not really a real ecosystem. I don't really see like a strong community, like a strong ecosystem as opposed to internet computer. I do feel a community. I do feel an ecosystem. You guys are a community. Uh, you know, you guys have been enhancing my life quite a bit uh, in all sorts of ways. So thank you to all you guys watching, by the way. And thank you to all you guys that sent me some ICPs to help me get out of debt. Um, but like, I feel like this is a real community. We have our own programming language, Motoko. We have our own ecosystem and our own dApps, whether it's OpenChat or GoldDAO or Cityscape coming soon, right? So we're ecosystem. We're a real community. As opposed to Hedera, I think they are piggybacking off Ethereum. And in my opinion, it's only a matter of time till they jump ship to Arbitrum or Polygon or one of Ethereum's mini side chains. So in an ecosystem department, Hedera gets a big fail, and in a node operated apartment, Hedera also gets a big fail. So it's just a failure, man. All right. Now we're getting to the network itself. Let's look at the network, and this is just cold numbers. We could just run through this. Transaction per second. Hedera um, offers currently 10,000 transactions per second, and ICP offers 11,500 transactions per second. ICP wins. Finality. Uh, Hedera has a time to finality of 2.5 seconds. Anything from, I think anything from 3 to 5 seconds. Yeah. Anything from 3 to 5 seconds is Hedera's time to finale. I'm just making sure my numbers are right. And ICP has a finality of 1 second, as you guys know, thanks to this chain key cryptography, its unique consensus method, which allows super blazing speed finale period. Network fees. This was actually good from on a part of Hedera because they have like a nice table which you could refer to on how much uh, network transaction costs. And I've seen things ranging from like fractional of a penny, right, to five cents. So Hedera did actually pretty good. And ICP is, is also doing very good. Uh, a lot of the time, the ICP transactions are fractions of a penny. So I, I will say the network fee is a tie because they, they both seem really cheap as a network. They both seem reasonable. Uh, as a network. So I will make that a tie actually. Storage costs. And that's the last one. The storage cost situation is unique because again, Hedera wasn't built for running dApps, right? 
Uh, Hedera was really built to provide consensus service and token service, right? So it's really there to provide like service as a ledger and as a, you know, token service, right? You could put tokens on Hedera and, and process transactions there. So it, it, it's not really built for storage. And it also has a max storage capacity of a megabyte, right? You can't put a file that's more than a megabyte on, uh, I mean, megabit uh, on Hedera. I think the, the max is 1,024 kilobytes. So you're, you're limited. <laughs> you're very limited. As opposed to ICP, you know, you know the routine, $5 for one gig on internet computer. And this is because internet computer is indeed built to run full-scale applications. So you can store large things on internet computer. And it's only going to cost you $5 for one gig to run something on the internet computer blockchain. So ICP went storage again. But again, it's not a fair comparison because Hedera's main service is their consensus and token service, right? They're, they're not meant to be like, they're not, they're not meant to host dApps and stuff like that. They're, they're a limited service. What is the conclusion? The conclusion to me is that these two blockchains should really be, should, should really not be compared. Hedera is really a company trying to capitalize on a market for distributed ledging and consensus service, right? That's what that's what they're really trying to capitalize on. They see uh, a, a market growing for a, a consensus, making sure that data is temper proof and verified, and they're trying to, you know, capitalize on that need. And I could totally see them perhaps using their Hashgraph technology to provide those consensus service and token service to some businesses. It's totally possible. As well, so internet computer, there's a much bigger vision than like a company trying to make some money from the Web3 infrastructure, right? Internet computer has a vision of creating a world computer that hosts the web services we need, but in a way that gives us our sovereignty and privacy back, right? Because you own your data on a blockchain and you don't have a platform risk. I could say what I want and not get deplatformed. Uh, you could believe whatever political ideology you believe in and your bank account won't be frozen, right? If it's on the internet computer. So the goal of the internet computer is to create a world computer where your application, your web services uh, are available to you, for you to use, but you own the data, right? And you have your sovereignty. No one can dethrone your banking account or your... Uh, YouTube account, whatever the version of YouTube will be on Web3, right? It's, 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 an, it's a platform to give us the web services we currently use, but in a way that gives us our sovereignty and privacy back. So internet computer is much bigger than just an enterprise trying to capitalize on demand for distributed ledging and consensus algorithms. So I give it to ICP because I believe in freedom. I'm a libertarian. I did a secret people on Ayn Rand. I, I, it should, guys, you should see that I'm authentic. I've been a libertarian. I've been a believer of freedom. And when I see a project like ICP that has given us our sovereignty and our privacy back, I'm going to jump on board, which is why I'm going to go all the way in on internet computer. In any case, my misfits, that's all I have for you in this episode. What did you think of HBAR versus ICP? In my opinion, HBAR is a no-go for me. I'm not buying it because... It's restricted to 39 council members. It's not open source, and you can't even run a node unless you're part of the club. That's not what I believe in. I'm sure HBAR will do fine, but I'm not buying it. Share your thoughts in the comment section. I can't wait to hear them. In any case, don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.